folks, welcome back to Good Works Tractors. Today we're going to be installing a Rhino Hide Canopy on my John Deere 3025E tractor. I've been spending more time on this machine lately, and it's hot out there in the sun. I got to get some shade going on. The 1025R has a canopy, but it's also been overheating. I don't know what the problem is. I still got to try to figure that out. So it's intermittent, not happening all the time. So sometimes it works fine, other times it doesn't. Regardless, we're going to install one of these bad boys today. And did I tell you? We bought Rhino Hide. We are the new owners of Rhino Hide Canopies. You gotta check out that new website. All right, so what you see right here is what you guys would get as well. This is how it would show up by FedEx. That's who we use to ship them right now. So you don't have to offload this from a semi. In fact, I'll show you right now. That's me picking up everything right there, okay? So it's, it's lightweight. That's one of the main features that we loved about it. And when Don, the old owner, was getting ready to sell, that's why I was interested in, in buying this company is because, well, you can see right here, made in the USA, all right? That's a big deal to us, but it is really tough as nails. We did a test in the wintertime, in the cold. We compared this type of material, which is kind of like that bed liner material, just to, just to en envision that and picture that. We did a test comparing that versus uh, the polymer hood from John Deere versus the steel hood from Kubota. Dropped things on them, all sorts of stuff. Drove over them with tractors, just tried to do a torture test basically, and the only one that survived was the Rhino Hide. Another cumbersome task with any other canopy that's out there is the fact that it's so darn heavy, there's no easy way to take it on and off your tractor. So the difference with the Rhino Hide is the fact that it's so lightweight, it's a one person job. There's a couple of quick set knobs that you just, you turn each one of them, loosen it up off of the struts, you just lift it up, take it off, it's a piece of cake. So that's great for storage, that's great for transport. So if you're trailing it down the road, I used to sell a ton of used tractors. And so a lot of them would come in, especially down, down south, they'd come in with canopies. And it was incredible the amount that had damage from the, the, the being driven up here along the highway at 70 miles an hour and just the, the canopy would be bent back in half or completely demolished. Or sometimes they'd come in fine from transportation, but they'd be all mangled because of you know, the, the previous owner hit trees and, and who knows what else and just damaged the thing. So that's the difference with the Rhino Hide. And if you don't have big overhead doors where you're storing it, just a standard seven foot garage, that's an easy thing to take it on and off so you can fit inside your garage when you need to, put that canopy back on for protection when you want it. Also, if you have a backhoe on the back of your tractor with a seat right here, you can get an extra set of hardware to mount onto your ROPS bar, take that canopy off the front side, mount it on the back side and have coverage all out here while you're on your backhoe. I think you guys will be pleased to know that this comes with free shipping, nothing extra in all the lower 48 states, and you can get it in any color you want as long as that color is black. So check us out, brand new website at tractorcanopy.com. We just launched it. It looks amazing. I'm sure we'll have some tweaks to do. It's always a work in progress, right? But we're really excited. Things are really shaping up. It's a totally separate business from Goodworks Tractors. So you're gonna go right to their website. That's the only place to buy it, tractorcanopy.com. Now we inherited the business with two distinct models. There's a Model S and the Model E. Now the Model S is not gonna be the version that goes on and off very easily. And honestly, I think we're probably gonna end up phasing that one out. It is a little bit cheaper, but it's a stationary model, uh, hence the Model S, okay? So the Model E is gonna be for easy on, easy off. That really seems to be the one that most folks want. It is a bit more money, but not a whole lot. And for the added bonus of being able to take it on and off, you know, requires some additional hardware. That's where the extra cost comes from, but it's a lot more convenient, a lot more flexible than for the user, especially if you have a backhoe as well, or you want to transport, or you want to store it, that kind of thing. So it gives a lot more, well, flexibility. And so that's going to be the model we're focusing on in the long run. Now, John Deere had a great idea to introduce a forward leaning or forward sloping ROPS, and it's created its own set of challenges for a lot of reasons. A lot of folks wonder in general why they did such a thing, and I don't have a good answer for that. It also posed a challenge for Don when he was trying to create a version of the hardware to properly fit this kind of a situation found on the 1025R and the 2025R. And so he was successful in coming up with a version that would properly fit at, a, at the right angle, the right placement for the 1025, the 2025, and I'm talking the new generations, right? So Gen 2 of both of those models. So if you do have this goofy forward sloping, forward slanting, forward leaning, whatever you wanna call it, ROPS, make sure you look on the website. We're gonna have a separate location just for that style. All right, so let's get to work installing this bad boy. I'm gonna be using this later today.
right, guys, insulation folks just showed up to keep on keeping on. So we are going to get out of their hair, move to a different spot. So we will regroup and see you there. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below. So we have regrouped. We are going to get started here. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to sit on the tractor and kind of just you know, run my hand over to the ROPS bar and kind of have a minimum height of where my head is at, right? You don't want to have the canopy mounted lower than your head. You want to have at least a, a few inches of room, I would think, you know, getting on and off. It, it, it's adjustable, right? They're going to be U-channel brackets that are clamped down on the ROPS bar. So you can end up sliding those up and down if you want to. These are meant to be universal and reversible and all that kind of thing. So depending on your ROPS and on your tractor, you could have a lot of options as far as mounting and how you want to set it up if you want to mount the uh, um, brackets on the inside of the wraps or on the outside or on the back side, the front side, all that kind of stuff up, down on the height. You know, you want to, uh, all the wraps bars are going to be a little bit different on how this um, joint here is situated and, and have some restrictions. Potentially some are going to allow for installation below this joint. Others are going to only be above the joint too. Okay, so about the, a third of the way up these red stickers. This is where my head is at, so I want it to be a few inches higher than that minimum. So again, you're trying to strike that balance between good clearance for your head as well as maximizing the shade that you can get from the canopy. And so the lower the canopy is, the more shade you're going to have. The higher up, the less shade, but more clearance, potentially easier to get on and off the tractor or, you know, lower it down and just take a little bit more care getting on and off your tractor not to whack your head. And again, while we are drilling a couple holes, we're not drilling into the ROPS. You should never modify your ROPS in any way. So we're just going to drill two holes in that L bracket that we showed you uh, to fine tune the final adjustment. But all this stuff is redoable, right? So if you don't like where it's at after you initially get it set up, you can just take it all apart, redo it where you want it and put it back together. Okay, so again, my head is about right here and you probably wanna have, I don't know, maybe six inches minimum of clearance above your head. So six inches is gonna put me right about at this location here and just another couple of inches, I can get the canopy mounted above the ROPS bar. So I think I'm gonna mount this on the back side of my ROPS we're gonna play around with it. Every tractor is different, right? But I'm gonna to try to mount on the back side, and then I'll have the canopy kind of back here somewhere and have a little bit better coverage on the front of the back side. Repeat for the other side. All right, so these are just hand tightened on here now just to kind of sort of keep them in place. And we're gonna come back through, level everything out afterwards, but we're gonna put the strut on now, set our canopy height where we want that before we tighten, like final tighten everything down. Okay, so this is gonna be one of your 3 8 inch bolts that you have on here. And again, this is a universal bracket, all right? So you're not gonna end up using both these holes. You're only gonna use the top one, no matter how you have it oriented. The bottom one is where you're gonna end up drilling. So that's gonna be the spot you drill, one here and then one on the other side. You're not gonna use this hole, there's nothing wrong. It's just there so you have the flexibility depending on how it's oriented, orientated? Oriented. oriented. This is gonna be a lock nut that's on there. Okay, so snug enough now, but still allows for adjustment so we can set it where we want. We're gonna put the strut on there, test it out. Okay, so here's where you're starting to make your final adjustments, right? So you can see right now how this bar, which is right where your canopy is gonna lay on, is sloping up a little bit this way. I think I want it level or maybe just a hair sloping down, pitching down on the front. So one or the other there. So I'm gonna, um, well, I guess you can do that a couple different ways, uh, but we're gonna raise this whole thing up just a touch. Kind of wiggle it there. And we can throw a level on here too. So eyeballing it, 
This is either level or just a hair pitching down. And so we're gonna kinda just tighten it down a little bit more so hopefully it stays. So my handy assistant, cameraman, brother, handed me the level. Okay, yeah, so we're, you know, this would be level for reference. So we're slightly leaning forward, which I'm good with. Okay, so I'm sitting down just to give you a visual, right? And so this is just your eyeball test. Are you gonna feel good with it in this location? And again, I'm, I'm deciding putting it up here and having a little bit more coverage on the backside versus I could lower it down. I could reconfigure these brackets and mount it further down and then have the backside of the canopy butting up into the ROP. So, you know, you can visually see where I'm at. It'd, it'd be slightly behind me, but you know, potentially wouldn't have as much coverage from the sun if I'm directly away from the sun. It's a trade-off, right? So I'm gonna try it in this location, even though it is higher, and see how it goes. All right, so I'm gonna tighten down these U-bolts. I'm doing this one side, you're gonna get this set so it's nice and firm where I want it. And then we're gonna level it out across to the other side and, and repeat for, for over there. Just trying not to bump anything. Okay, so I'm gonna clamp this, since it's right where I want it to be. And so there's already a quarter inch hole that's in the square tube. And so I'm gonna take the drill bit, put it right through there, and drill through our L bracket as well. And that's where we're gonna put our quarter inch bolt, tighten it, we'll be good to go. All right, for these little guys, you're just gonna use 7 sixteenths on both. To make it more aesthetically pleasing, I'm gonna reverse this one, have it face the other way. Boom, got it. Remember, every time a nut goes on, there's a washer that goes with it. Okay, so this is one position we could have it in, but you have an adjustment. We can slide it all the way back, which we're gonna do, which is the reason we mounted it up high above the ROP, so. Or we can move it as far back as this, and so as I'm sitting underneath here, there's a lot more coverage on the backside now. Yeah, it's higher. Not as much in the front. I think this looks pretty good. All right, so in the front to back adjustment, you can see the ridges and valleys that you have along here. Obviously, you don't want to pick one of these, well, valleys, I guess we're looking at it, if we're looking at it upside down. You want to slide this forward so it's right in the middle. Here, you have a big fender washer. You have one of these guys that you have to have on the top side that rests down in there. So square it up in one of those locations. Putting the bolts through this way, that way I don't have anything uh, to whack my head on when I'm underneath here. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Lock nut, get that on the right way. Not bad for not seeing what I'm doing. Before I get that too tight, put the other ones in, make sure 
We're all lining up and then I'll come back through, tighten them all down. Now, of course, we could take this whole top right off and do this all on the ground too. It's not too bad for me, but always an option for you guys. Okay, we're done. We've got it installed. This is what it looks like. That's pretty darn sweet. I can't wait to get it out in the sun. It's sunny right now. I think I like this coverage. And so really, it's all about a trade-off, right? So if I'm getting on and off of this, this is how I normally would. It's nice to have a few extra inches there and not have to worry about whacking my head on something. It's just easy to get underneath and sit down on the tractor. But if you want to have it down lower, you could always do that, but you'd have to really watch and be hunched over as you're getting on and off the tractor all the time to avoid whacking your head. That is a wrap for us. We're gonna clean up and then, uh, I don't know, just, you know, just drive around a little bit. See what we think, have some fun. I wanna thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this informative and helpful on how to install your canopy on your tractor. Again, free shipping, go to tractorcanopy.com. Again, this is separate from Goodworks Tractors. It is owned by me and my brother, but it's a separate company, a separate entity, just keeping it simple that way. So go to tractorcanopy.com not good works tractors but regardless we'd love to have you follow along so if you like watching tractor videos about products projects in action things that go wrong sometimes things actually go right too we'd love to have you tag along hit that subscribe button and for virtually anything else you might need for your tractor for the front end loader or the three-point hitch we can help you out at goodworkstractors.com we also sell and ship all over the country i want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time stay safe we'll see you soon